Metropolis Arc 1 is one of those libraries you must have surely heard about if you're a composer or if you've been watching my video tutorials because I use it quite a lot here. These days there's also been quite some talk about Arc 1, 2 and 3 because Native Instruments is holding a discount until the middle of December on, th on those three libraries. And naturally lots of people have been asking me, hey Alex, should I get Arc 1? Is it as good as it looks and everything? And to answer to that question, I wanted to make this video where I explain to you guys why Arc 1 is my number one favorite orchestral libraries of them all. I'm also going to explain my take on like Arc 2 and 3, which one you should get and stuff like that. But I want to talk about Arc 1 first by showing you this example. This is the first track I ever composed after buying Arc 1. And I want to show you this bit, which is the loudest bit of the track. And I just isolated the Arc 1 instruments along with a synthesizer from Serum to show you how this library sounds uh, with almost no processing. Almost. Uh, it's very loud though, so be prepared. I'm going to be playing it in 3, 2, 1. That's an excerpt from my track, uh, The Landing, which is a Final Fantasy VIII cover. If you want to get the stems and MIDI files of this track, you can get them on Patreon, link down below in the description of this video. But anyway, when I wrote this, I was like, what the hell is that? Like, how, how is it possible it sounds so freaking loud? Mind you, right now we only have a few like mastering plugins like Isotope Ozone on the master, but apart from that, the track itself wasn't that much mixed. I didn't have to put so much work into making it sound amazing like that, but it did. He also did in this part here, in the middle. Like those strings that choir the brass were just like, whoa, I, it blew me away. I was like, what the hell is this? It sounded so loud and so huge from the get-go. Now, now that's the philosophy behind this whole library, what they tried to do, orchestral tools. And by the way, this video is not sponsored by orchestral tools in any way. Actually, if those guys sponsored me and they sent me free libraries to show you guys and review them, I would be over the moon. So maybe let's make that possible, guys. Like, share this video on the Orchestral Tools Twitter and tell them, hey, Alex has been advocating about your libraries for years. Send him a few copies of Metropolis Arc 3 or something. That would be amazing. So guys, share that on Orchestral Tools social media. Maybe we can get their attention and I can review their libraries for you. But Arc 1 specifically, when I tried it, I was like, what the hell? is this. This is like incredible. Uh, especially, I noticed that straight away when I opened the uh, low strings patch and I played the lowest note, this is what it sounds like. That's the lowest note in the double bass patch or in the low strings patch. That's like massive. I mean, look at the spectrum. That's insane. Same thing, like uh, even the brass section in the choir, amazing. And I noticed, well, this library has, you know, it comes with many different instruments. You have the strings, you have the brass, you have the choir, you even have guitars, which I am not a huge fan of, but you have guitars, you have uh, percussion, so you have everything. And most of these instruments were recorded in incredibly loud um, registers. So that's why it sounds like this. Also, in this case, the low strings patch and high strings patch there are layered versions of those instruments. So low strings patch, we have in the legato, you have you play a note, what you have is actually that note being played on double basses, and you also have a note being played on a higher octave by a cello. So in the C3 note here, for example, we have C3 on double basses and C4 on cellos. When I play the C3 note, it's both layered like that. that because the philosophy here is to make things sound as huge as possible. So that's, that's what I did. And that's what makes this library so easy to use. Now, you also have mic positions, so this is like a normal library, but on drugs or on steroids or something, you know? So that makes it very easy to write loud stuff using this without having to like stress with, you know, compression and all those things so much yourself because from the way it sounds, it's already incredible. You can check it out in any of my tracks, like at least half of the orchestra is almost always Metropolis Arc 1. Uh, I'm going to leave a link to, to my playlist with all my music I composed with this library. You can check it out there. It sounds incredible, in my opinion. 
because of the library and also because of how I composed it for sure. But big part of that is the library. When I try normal libraries now, I feel a bit not disappointed, but like, wow, this doesn't sound as huge as I'm used to because with Arc 1, things just sound incredibly big. So that's great. And uh, of course, this library has drawbacks, of course, like uh, the fact that you cannot, like the strings patches, you only have strings low and strings high. You can't really, you know, write for violins and violas separately. I cannot cheat the system by considering like some of the low strings double basses and some of the low strings cellos. So for the double basses patch, the double basses low strings, I will write super low notes. And for the cellos patch that I use, like or the, or the double basses, sorry, for the strings low patch that uses cellos, I will write higher notes. Because after a certain threshold of octave, the double basses sound will not play. Uh, same thing I do for the high strings and low strings, and high strings, uh, violas and violins. And I, in the violin spiccato, I only wrote very high notes, even though it's still the high strings patch. And in the violas spiccatos, I wrote a bit of like intermediate, and, you know, low notes, stuff like that. But it's actually just low strings patch and high strings patch. So that's how I use my arc one. But that, apart from that, like in the brass, for example, you don't have that issue. In the brass, you have all the split instruments. You have like bass trombone and tubas and uh, French horn and chimbasi and trumpets. So they're split. There's also uh, two patches for French horn. There's a uh, three French horn and nine French horn. Of course, the nine French horn sounds way more loud. As for the choir, you have higher ensemble, like women, and low ensemble, men. And the choir sounds freaking insane in this library. I love it. It's, it's great. And uh, the issue with this one is that it cannot go quiet because it was Recorded and only intended for loud stuff. And I love it when sample developers do that. They put limitations on what they want to do because they want to do one thing, one very specific thing, but doing very well. Another sample library developer that does that is performance samples. And I love their samples because they sound so good out of the box also. And they're also, they adapt to how you write for them. Like Oceania, uh, Caspian, or Solos of the Sea, like Whatever you write, whatever you play, the, the sample library itself will adapt its attack times and stuff like that to sound amazing from the get-go. So that's like what, how, you know, like it's, they, these developers, they try to do one thing, but they do it very well. And Arc 1 was so successful in sounding loud. That's all it does, really. If you want to write quiet stuff with Arc 1, forget it. It's not going to sound quiet. I tried it in this song, in the intro, and it doesn't sound quiet at all. It sounds weird. But then the rest of the song is loud, so Metropolis Arc 1 was the best library for this one. Now, you might be asking yourself, um, okay, but what, which one should I get between Arc 1, 2, and 3? So, one is the loud library. And in my opinion, there's no other libraries that, has, that are as loud for the same price, you know, and that contain so many instruments. So, the powerful thing is that it contains strings, brass, um, and choir, and a bit of percussion, which I don't really like, but guitars and piano as well. So, like, six instruments, and they sound amazing. Um, pretty much. Well, maybe, you know, other libraries that have as many instruments maybe don't sound as loud. The, the one that's the closest, I think, is Jaeger. Jaeger has a bit of a more, like, defined sound, though. The, the drawback with Arc 1, except the fact, uh, apart from the fact that it's not very quiet, is the fact that it's quite blurry. It's blurred, kind of, you know? While Jaeger is a bit more precise in sound, but it's thinner. Now, Arc 2 instead is the brother of Arc 1 and it's supposed to be the quiet and intimate library. For all I heard though, like you can get the same results that you would get with Arc 2 with many other libraries, you know? So Arc 2 is easily replaceable in my opinion. Arc 1, not replaceable. You can, you can try to get to the same loudness, but uh, it's not that easy. And as for Arc 3 instead, that one is very interesting. I never tried it, just heard the demos, just like Arc 2, but... In the case of Arc 3, I noticed straight away what's so special about that library. First, the percussion sounds incredible. And I'm a percussion freak, so whenever I hear percussion, I'm like, yes, this is my, th my stuff. But apart from that, um, Arc 3 has this sort of like aleatoric, or rather atonal articulations that would work so well in film music transitions. You know, they build tension so well and stuff like that. The issue is that they work well in film music, and I don't score films. I used to make music, like trailer music, a lot back in the days, uh, two years ago or something. I do it a bit less now, 
Uh, but even in trailer music, you don't use those transitions that you would use in film music. And I don't have examples for that now. If you check out the demos for Arc 3, you're going to understand what I mean. So for me, Arc 3, would I love to have it? Yeah, for sure. I would love to have it. Would I use it? I don't think so. Like, I don't think I would use it in such a way to justify the, the, the expense. So that's why I'm not buying it. You know, that's, that's a good, you know, when you want to buy a library right now, you might be asking yourself, should I buy Arc 1 or not? Well, the, the, the answer, or rather the question you need to ask yourself is this. If I buy it, Am I going to use it a lot? Is it going to change? Like, is, I'm gonna use, am I going to use this library so much to the point that it's going to change how my music sounds? In my case, the answer was yes, because I didn't really own loads of orchestral libraries before Arc 1. And the ones I owned didn't sound so massive. You know, I had to do quite some work to make them sound huge. So I thought, well, if I get this one, I'm going to, you know, I heard the demos. I was like, wow, this sounds amazing. If I get this one and I can get the same sound, then my music is going to change. But if you, if you feel like, oh, this would be a nice addition, but I don't really need it, maybe don't buy it. But if you feel like, wow, if I own this, then my music would change drastically, then get it. You know, Arc 3, would my music change? Not really, because I don't write film music anyhow. I wouldn't use those, you know, aleatoric articulations, I think, like those, uh, you know, transitory, uh, atonal risers and clusters. It would be amazing to have it. It would be fun to have it, but it wouldn't justify the expense. That's why I'm, I'm not getting it. Now, Judge like based on those things, think for yourself if you should get Arc 1 or not, or Arc 3 or not, Arc 2 or not. Honestly, I think 1 and 3 are the best. The 2, again, I think is highly replaceable. Maybe I'm wrong, I haven't tried it, but honestly, it gives me that impression. And um, yeah, that, that's all I wanted to say really. So Arc 1, very easy to use, sounds huge and massive out of the box, sounds super loud, and the brass and choir are actually amazing, even as standalones, you know. While the strings, you have the issue that you have to use the low strings patch or the high strings patch, but you know you can split them by cheating. That's not very ideal, but that's how I do it. And uh, what I do for the strings, I usually like after getting Arc One, I you know wanted to have some strings that sounded dynamic, sounded you know split and everything. So I bought even cinematic strings too and stuff like that. But guys, like uh, I I <laughs> I highly recommend it if you want to write loud orchestral music. But only if you don't have libraries that get so loud. If you do have lots of libraries, then why the hell have you even watched this video? I don't know. But anyway, that's all for this quick review. And if you have questions about ARC, you can leave them down in comments. I'm going to try to reply, but I suggest you to listen to the demos and also listen to my music. Because again, most of the orchestra in my tracks is always Metropolis ARC 1. And if you want to get an insight in my music, analyze the songs a bit more, have access to the stems and the MIDI data of my songs, and with stems I mean stuff like this, you can get this on my Patreon page. Link down below in the description. That's all for this video though. I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.